But th there's a level of comfort when I say that because it's a little bit more of what we're used to seeing in golf, right? And I came to this realization, and I think it, it could help a lot of fans trust and live a little bit more because that's a lot of the complaint that I see from a lot of people. But I made the analogy a little bit ago of why I think we can end up with a great product. How in, in football, European football, right? You have the Premier League, you have the Spanish League, you have the, the German League, you have Serie A, right? You have um, the, the Champions League, the Europe Cup, you have many other things. But the one thing I realized is they all play under the same set of rules, right? While we play under most set of rules, the one key difference is 72 holes, right? Uh, the only sport that I see that's a little bit different to where they play pretty much the same and then the Grand Slams are different is tennis. But even within then, every tournament or every championship is the same set of rules, right? So that's one of the main reasons why I believe it could help us. But at the end of the day, Live is a business. If it doesn't fit the product, it doesn't fit the product. I'm just a player, right? There's a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me that can figure it out and explain why they believe 50 or four holes may be better for them. Um, I can tell you from player experience, and I tell the people that, that give me that argument, if you come watch an event, you forget by Sunday that you've only played three rounds. It makes no difference. You're competing to win. You win or you don't win. And by the end of the day, if I told you, oh, it was 50 or four holes, you really don't think about it because you're, inverse, you're just immersed in the competition, right? And uh, the competition is the same. You want going down the stretch with a one or two shot lead or one two shot deficit, the feelings are all the same, right? So uh, I, that would be also my counter argument to that. If you haven't experienced it and haven't given it a chance, it's not fair to judge without knowing. Greg, what's your response to that? I think from uh, Liz's perspective, we're very open-minded about it. But you've got to understand there is economic impact about um, putting television on for 72 holes. Uh, right now, John's, John hits the nail on the head. Uh, there's no – when you can tee up on Friday, it's a sprint to the end. It's, it, there's no warm-up time period to get you. If you have Thursday – I'm talking about from a player's perspective now – Sometimes you can have, have an average first round and then you come back and shoot a 64 and get yourself back into it. Now you're into the, into, into the weekend. If you really don't play well on Friday here, you have a hard time because the quality of play here is so high, you know when you tee it off. And you'll speak to most of the guys out there. It's a question you should ask them. It is the intense pressure on it straight away because you have to perform immediately right off the bat. Um, so it's a great conversation to have. Uh, we will continue to have that conversation going forward. But we sit back and say, w what value do we get on putting on television on Thursday? Now, go to Evans. How do we build out in the future? How do we get more people, as the Premier says, um, to the golf course? Maybe it is Thursday. And you allow another 30,000 people coming in on a Thursday. There are things that we sit back and look at to see what is the most optimal solution to make this a better and better and better event. And uh, 72 holes is discussed.